My cat's asleep, so I gotta be real quiet this time. Hey everybody, it's Chris. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about something uh, a bit different than usual. We're gonna talk about uh, comics. I haven't really talked about that before on this channel because <laughs> I, I, I don't really know a lot about them. Growing up, like I, I had kind of an interest in comics, but uh, I, I would get overwhelmed. Most superhero comics that people know have been running for just decades and decades, and I'm one of those people where uh, I need to do things like all the way through. It's also why I have a hard time watching a lot of TV shows. TV shows will go on for so long, and the idea of like having to get through dozens, sometimes hundreds of hours of episodes of a single TV show is just like daunting to me. And I just, so, so I just won't watch any of it. But there would still be a couple that I'd really like that were like smaller, self-contained stories, stuff like Watchmen I'd get really into. I, I felt like comics were uh, more or less the same thing over and over again. I, I know that's a stupid thing to say, because that is the opinion that anybody has about any media that they don't understand or, or don't really know well. It all just looks the same to them. That's, that's what everybody thinks about any kind of any kind of music they don't listen to. They think all the songs in the genre sound the same, that, that whole thing. I get that, and I know it's stupid, but that is the way I always felt. I would look at these stories and I'd feel like, ah, it's the same thing over and over again. Why would I want to have to go through so much, like like hundreds of issues of this story, of, the, of this character going through the same things over and over again, just so that I know all the references and I can go into the movies and I can feel like I, like I understood everything. I'd go and see like a lot of the Marvel movies, and I, I would like a lot of them, uh, ne never on the level that some of my friends, uh, like Tyler would, because they were, they were so into it. My girlfriend, Chelsea, she was very into, into comics. She is. She, she didn't lose interest. She's still very into comics. She always loved to go to Comic-Con, and I decided, you know what, yeah, like, I'll, I'll go. Because I, I had been, like, a very close mind I had been very close-minded about it, I guess was the thing. We mostly did panels, uh, over the weekend. And, uh, there was one in particular that had Scott Snyder at it. And, uh... Chelsea wanted to be in the front row because she is in love with Scott Snyder. So to make sure that we would get to sit in the front row, we went to the panel uh, that was in the same room beforehand. When we got there, like 10 minutes before the panel, there was really like nobody in line and like not many people really went to the panel because it was about this group, Lion Forge Comics, that we had never heard of. And it starts off kind of interesting. They're talking about how they were this company that is uh, rebranding and moving a lot of things around and trying to like basically rebuild themselves. They start talking about how their goal is basically to try and make comics appeal to people in ways that they haven't before, and try to uh, make comics appeal to people who haven't been into comics before this, and how their goal is to make comics for everybody. So they started talking about some of the things they were doing, uh, about making comics for like younger kids and stuff like that, and it was like, okay, that's pretty cool. And then they started talking about Magnetic Press, these people that they had acquired. And Magnetic Press uh, was just this company that just independently uh, published like a lot of really cool comics. This is one of them. Uh, I actually bought quite a few of theirs. This is the only one that I actually have on me right now because the other like three that I bought uh, at Comic-Con, I loaned out to people. <laughs> but they're all just these very beautiful books that like try really experimental things and they're all like little self-contained stories. And so like this, for example, the Love series is uh, just a series of books that has no words and it's just like telling a story about an animal and like a day in the life of that animal basically. It was a really interesting read, especially because I'm somebody who, uh, with comics, tends to just read the words and not really look at the images. And so reading something that was just images uh, kind of really challenged me to actually take in the artwork and actually look at everything that's there on the page. You know, the way that you're supposed to when you're reading a comic? Uh, I, need, I needed training wheels for that, I guess. But the reason I wanted to talk about them is about halfway through the panel, they had uh, this gentleman get up, uh, Joseph Illich who used to be an editor for Batman, like, during some of Batman's, like, most well-known arcs, he was, like, the editor there. And he gets up and he announces that they are creating their own superhero universe. And so, at first we're like, okay, that's really interesting. Like, they're, they're trying to create something uh, on the scale of what Marvel and DC is doing. Actually starting that from scratch, which I... I don't know the last time we've had anything new like that. Marvel and DC have been running these characters for so long. And they start talking about how they want to build a superhero universe with this philosophy of comics for everyone. How they wanted to make one with uh, a variety in the characters that we haven't seen before. They announced that there's going to be seven different series running, uh, along with uh, Catalyst Prime, which is going to be basically uh, the book about the event that causes all these people to get superpowers. And each of these heroes is going to come from a very different background, and it's going to try to be this, uh, this very inclusive, uh, diverse universe. And then they start announcing who's working on the books. And they start pulling out some of the 
biggest names in the business. Names big enough that I actually knew some of them. People like Christopher Priest, people like Amy Chu. When they said that Amy Chu was going to be working on one of the series, I just kind of looked over at Chelsea because I knew that like Amy Chu was like one of her favorite people in comics, and she was floored. <laughs> They have this staff that is not just diverse, but also insanely experienced and talented, who has been doing major things for Marvel and DC and like some of like the best runs. Christopher Priest has been doing Deathstroke. Amy Chu did this phenomenal Poison Ivy story. But there are two main reasons why I found this insanely exciting. First off, it's this huge universe that is starting from scratch right now. So for people like me who are overwhelmed by like these series with just decades of history that, that you feel like you have to know. Uh, you don't gotta worry about that. You, you can actually learn all of it as it happens right now. The second thing is that I really think that this is the kind of step forward that we've needed when it's come to diversity in entertainment. It's so I, I just I really want this to be successful. We all know that like diversity in, in film and comics has been like a really huge talking point lately. Uh, you just look at everything that's been happening at the Oscars the last couple years and just all of the debate and all of all of the anger and frustration and just everything that's been happening. It's hard to ignore this conversation that's going on. It's also hard to ignore the fact that uh, that conversation has been extremely volatile when it's come to comics. As somebody who isn't really involved in that world, I still see uh, all, all the argument and debate that happens over this. But with film and TV and video games, you are constantly making new universes and creating new characters. And since you are creating things from scratch all the time, you have all this opportunity to include characters that more accurately represent our times. But a lot of large comics are uh, afraid to do that, because it's a, it's a financial risk to them. You know, Superman has been working as a formula for a long time. You have this Clark Kent character, and he's been making money for them for such a long time. The idea of changing him from, like, a white man is... Eh. You do see some Marvel and DC franchises that do change things around, though. Usually the way they bring in their diversity is they have the superhero either die or retire and get replaced by a new person who takes on the same name and the same powers or whatever. Are you awake? And so sometimes don't touch the mic. Don't touch the mic. So sometimes when they bring in one of these new characters, they will change their demographics. They will make them a woman or they will change their race or their religion or their, or their sexual orientation. And it's always controversial when they do it. There's always going to be people who are saying that they're just doing it to pander. I don't read Spider-Man. I know so little about it. I, I cannot possibly tell you if Peter Parker or Miles Morales was more interesting, or if it doesn't matter. I don't know. Personally, I feel like it's not a big deal to replace these characters, but I'm also not attached to these characters. However, I think that when you change the demographics of an already existing superhero, I think that you're not going to fully satisfy the people on either side. Of course you're going to have the people who are going to feel like their character was ruined, or they're going to feel like they're, like they're pandering, or whatever. Personally, I don't agree with them, but they're there, they exist, and people are worried about their money. But then when it comes to the people who want to see their representation, you know, Miles Morales will be the black Spider-Man. But there are multiple Spider-Mans now. Sp Spider-Man? There's that asterisk there. You know, there's always that thing of like, okay, but he wasn't the first Spider-Man. You know, th this, is, this is the black one. His race becomes like an identifying, don't suck your tail on me. You don't have enough footing to do this right now. Whether you think it's a big deal or not, I just think that one of the best ways to really truly represent people is to just create heroes on this level that do just represent people from other backgrounds. Look at Static Shock, or I guess he's actually just Static. Static Shock was the TV show. He's not going to be compared to any other Statics. There, there's there's going to be no pro-con list of whether you like this one more or that one more. He just gets to be the character. That's what I think is so exciting about this universe that Lionforge is creating, is that we are just getting a universe that, from the get-go, represents different kinds of people. And the first issue of the first superhero that they're introducing, uh, Noble, uh, came out a couple days ago, and the reviews are pretty good. Uh, I haven't picked it up yet, I'm actually going to go pick it up on Saturday, because on Saturday, it's... Are you leaving? Are you going to jump off me? Ugh! <laughs> <sighs> I wish I wasn't cruel to declaw you. I'm gonna pick it up on Saturday because Saturday is free comic book day. And one of the free comics that they're offering on Saturday, which I guess is tomorrow, is Catalyst Prime. The story that launches this universe that explains where it all came from, where, where how these people got their powers. So I wanted to put this video out to let you guys know that if this at all sounds interesting to you, to just find uh, a comic book store close to you that is, that is doing free comic book day 
and go check out Catalyst Prime, maybe pick up Noble. If you look at Lionforge's website or their Twitter, they're constantly dropping information to like tease this whole thing, and it's a very cool, sophisticated sort of scientific plot, and it's being treated with just this, this, this gravity and just this excellence and like actual dramatic storytelling that, that is just really great. It's just it's such good world building. And it's so interesting. Like, as a writer, I'm intrigued, and usually comics don't do that for me. And, like, I don't want you to just go and support it for, like, diversity's sake. As great as diversity is, you know, it doesn't guarantee quality. But they've got such a fantastic lineup behind it. And everything that I've seen about it so far just looks like they're doing a really good job building this universe. And even if it isn't that good, do you know how many mediocre stories we have out right now anyways? Whether or not the characters are diverse, isn't really going to have much of an impact on whether the stories are well told or not. But, with how exhausting it's been to see the same stories over and over again, at least having characters from different backgrounds will help alleviate some of that. If nothing else, it'll at least feel like there's some variety to it, and that they're really creating something that hasn't been made before. And these people are so insanely passionate about it too. After we saw their panel, we were like so in love with them that we, we went and we found their booth, and like I said, we bought like a bunch of their stuff, and we just talked to them for so long, and they're such great, passionate people, such a small company, but they're trying to do such huge things, and it's just like, as like a small independent creator, that's the kind of stuff that I love to see, and that's the kind of stuff that like inspires me. And it's just really, really cool to know that there are people like that out there that are trying something this big, and they're just putting everything into it, and I really, really hope it goes well. That's all I really wanted to say about this. Uh, I'm sorry I got like a little more political uh, about this. I know I don't usually touch on that, even though I'm an extremely political person, honestly. I just don't like to feel like I'm forcing opinions on people, I guess. But regardless, I hope you at least found this interesting. Uh, again, this Saturday is free comic book day. Even if you're not sure you want to spend any money on it, at least go and just grab some free comics. Just see what's out there. Go check out the stuff that Magnetic Press does. I highly recommend uh, a Rendezvous in Phoenix and A Glance Backward. Those are just some phenomenal comics that came through Magnetic Press. Love the Lion, I think, is really interesting if you love beautiful artwork. It's just, it's just very, it's just very cute. Oh, there's a lot of blood in that. There's a lot of blood on that one. Let's let's find a let's find a panel that's not as bloody. I don't I don't, I don't want to scare anybody. The Lion, uh, I don't know if you know this. Uh, the Lion kills a lot of things. I should probably end this because I've been rambling and gushing for a long time. Uh, but I guess I just I'm kind of getting into comics now, and these guys are a large part of that. Uh, and so I guess uh, I just like to talk about things that I'm passionate about. Go figure. Thanks for listening. Let me know if this sounds interesting to you, if you got any other questions, and uh, take care. Say hi to your mother for me. What is that from? Say hi to your mother for me. What is that from? I swear to God that's from something. Say hi to your mother for th That's from something. God damn it.